zero. We have is landed. A, is it a perfect world yet? It, it's so perfect, it's round to the naked eye. Did you know that? Sure. Yeah, all you got to do is just a lot of drugs. You go to get go to your doctor, get a prescription, and you can see the glorious round earth. Did you know that only sick people need drugs? Everybody else <laughs> just <laughs> partakes of herbs. I don't, I don't <laughs> and fungi. I don't really think I know. But that, I'm just saying. It's a matter in of a point of world, it would not be against the law to mm. partake of herbs and fungi. Isn't, and, isn't that yes. just the cornerstone of stupidity is the very foundation of our societies? That's it, because in a perfect world, mm. we are full of unruly people because you can't ruly people who ruly themselves. Okay. Well, I'm still Flash and she's still... Graham Z, Miss Mary. And That's tonight, right. in a perfect world, we're going to call this one The Restrictions Suck. And that's the title of our endeavor this evening, tonight, today, morning, afternoon. And, uh, restrictions. Yeah, I had to get, restrictions. I had to get the, the Grim Man to come bail me out of a, a Windows problem I had before the show tonight. Thanks, Grim. And uh, you want to say hi to the bots and the buddies that are loitering in the real liberty media dot com chat. Yeah, yeah. Bots mm -hmm. and bodies. Mm -hmm. Who is all the bots and bodies? I seen uh, some con conversing going on. Yeah. Let's see, there's there's thirty eight people in here. Whee! I see Barman right up top. I got a lick sword. Yeah, Barman is the most fun different bot in the whole wide world. And then there's Beetle Beetle hey, Beetle Beetle's probably got Pippi on his lap. I don't think Beetle's I also see Grimner, that. the RLM god, don't you know? Closely Grimner. followed by the Lucky Moose Boyle, who's logged in, but yeah. she's probably at Wake. She, she's slaving and, away uh, at her. Yeah. Yep. Slaving away. Yep. The lovely Miss Kate is also Miss here. Hey, Kate. Miss Kate. Hey. Down in Florida. We got some prints going on. Florida. Prints in brackets. Brackets. Well. Holy! Wait yeah, a minute. What? Wait, okay. Wait a minute. What kind that, of, that, that print kind of, has got to be in brackets in order for you to go. Huh? When, uh, in brackets. Yeah. I must pay attention. That must be some revolutionary stand against government. I would read. Yeah, I think that's it. There you go. That I think we got a dissenter among us. One of we those. Got an anti too. I'm just kidding. Anyway, what? I was making fun of the brackets. Yeah. I know you were. I know you were. And I just kept, and we're walking, we're walking. Oh, Riley. Anti is oh, here. Anti. And, and Chalcedony oh, and God. Echelon. God. And then we got me. Just Miss me. Mary. Just me. That's right, We got Miss some Mary. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 going on, and Java I got me two. some Java in my Ooh. cup. Yeah. Woohoo! I also see Meister uh, Brower is here, as well as Papa man. Papa Ponder Gander. Vincent! He ganders. Yeah, he ganders and he ponders, and then he sometimes <laughs> gets in trouble for gandering. With who? Oh! Who? Who? Grimmy who, said, who, don't who, forget who? to mention that Freedom's Network is back. Booyah! Don't Freedom. forget to mention that Freedom's Network is back, Mary. Yeah. Yeah, don't forget to mention that, that Freedom's Network is I, back. I just did. <laughs> you told me not to, so I did it. Oh. Okay. <sighs> I never get these rules proper. They're always well, they're always written so you're badly. An unruly kind of ruling. I think just think rules are just written so badly. I always do them wrong. Well, I blame you're the an rule. unruly. Yeah, you undo you. them rules. <laughs> you you rulingly unruly I guy. But I brought my eraser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also see Poopster is here as ah, well as Rob Oikes. Robert. Yeah, Robert. we got some roams going on in the chat as well. And the lovely Miss Savannah White, who clues us in on what we share as if we didn't already know because that's why we shared it. Uh, but thank uh, you, Miss Savannah, anyway, for turning those letters. Uh, we got a uh, Vinny in the house. Uh, Vinny! Uh, uh, I also see a weather dork. Weather dork, why did you let it be so windy out here? It's bed breezy. Bed breezy. 
I also see some phantom. The it's phantom. the phantom. Oh, the phantom. The phantom. So we got some CC66. What the hell does CC66 mean? I don't even Does that mean start. closed captioning for the not quite demonic? Because <laughs> it doesn't have that third six? I don't know. Well, you cleaned it up real good for the kids out there in radio. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. My mind went that's... somewhere else. But that's... Oh, well, it's not quite there, too. But yeah. Chascura is also here, as well as the lovely Miss Cycles. And Cycles has a giggle fest going on right <laughs> now because <laughs> it's a butt geiger guy. He's got a butt geiger. Does that mean No, no, a... no. His, his name is <laughs> Butt Guy. Butt guy. Gug, gug, gug. Ah. No. Yeah, it, he's running for the White House on the Democratic Party side of the fight. You're you're supposed to pronounce it boot judge, boot the judge. Uh, you don't have to do anything. Uh, you know, Vinny, But I think it, nah. I think he's a buddy geek. Vinny's not buddy here tonight. I can do what I want. I don't have no ruler tonight. <laughs> you are just an unruly sort it's of feller. It's a perfect world. And nobody rules <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I am. Shit. I'm yeah. married right up to my eyeballs, believe me. It's yeah. just talk. Good God. Yeah. I got and married. And the lovely cycles. Did I say the lovely cycles already? Three times. Okay. Well, see, for thir- <laughs> third time, the charm. Uh, 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 okay, that's Crypto oh, Coiner 66. Thank you very much, Grim. I much prefer closed captioning for the demonically impaired. Yeah, yours had a <laughs> spark to it. Because yeah. I'm weird. Yeah, like you're like I'm... Rowan Atkins when he plays Toby and you know welcoming everybody to hell. Oh. You know he's the devil. But you can on this call him side, Toby. We have debauchery, uh, and on this side, we similar. Have... Yeah, it was hysterical. Yeah, he even and updated walking, it for Trump. We're walking. Yes. Mm. I like to be a tour guide. We got a like cyborg that. noodle here, cyborg too. Cyborg noodles. May you be touched by the cyborgian noodliness. Uh-oh. <laughs> E-man. He's an E-man. So I wonder what he is when he's not E. Yeah. I, I don't know. Number five is alive. Johnny he is five. number five. Uh-huh. We got some ants. Johnny but five he- is alive. <laughs> Grim's wanting to know who's judging butts. I don't know. Apparently, this guy, he's the mayor of South Bend. <laughs> you got to, yeah, you got to get get Cirque on I, that one. She's the one that found it. And it's I making know. her Cycles giggle. Cycles did good. Uh, I also good. see, and Siv is here. And I have ended all civility because I'm talking about a butt guy <laughs> who's a mayor of South Bend. Wow. How appropriate. Yeah. Flash, somebody is here. It's the Flash. The flash. We got a frumpy here too, as well as grommet. And guest three four four two five. Three four four two five. Uh, up against the wall. Three four four two five. You look like you're holding drugs. No, that's not the way the song goes. It's I'm up filling against in the for wall, Vinny. Redneck mothers. Well, no, yeah. it wasn't. It, David Peel and the Lower East Side did that before it. It was way different. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll post the song during the. The show tonight on the RLM for your your perusal. We got another Java doctor too. We have a jo- Java doctor Java too and a doctor regular Java too. doctor. And JJ's is hey. here enough lovely no, Scottish. No, he's not. He's just logged on. He's not here. I know he's just logged on, but he's a Scottish fellow. Oh, he's yes. out in the wind like it is here. Uh, His guilt is blowing up. He's cooling the family jewels. Uh, ouch. Moving along. Wow. <laughs> See what happens when you let me come play. Papa Papa Palm Sauce is here, as well as Sock Papa. I blame Kansas. Yeah, you blame Kansas because it's windy out here. Dang it. We got a Slim Jim Flynn in here, too, as well as a Smataz, which is a bot, and I'm that's what I aspire to be, a Smataz. <laughs> and we got a Holiest Roger ever. The Holiest the whole, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 man. Mm. <laughs> and rounding out the group, we got the one, the only, the Z-Picks. Yeah. And now, 
Back to you, Flasher Rooney. Whoa, thank you very much. Whoa. And now, for your listening pleasure, not right now because we're doing the show, but I'm going to post what that brought to mind to me. And it's not what you ah. came up with. Ah. But back See, when I, I was just a, rem- What? I remember the up against wall, redneck. Mother. Right. And way back in the day when I was just a little boy, my, uh, I was in this little gang in 1968, 69. And Louis was uh, John's brother. He was older than John. And John was in the gang. Well, we would go to John's house and listen to David Peel on the Lower East Side. <laughs> we are about 10 years old. It was hysterical. Cool. And it's like just, you know, the Bronx, ver- well, not the Bronx, it'd be the, I guess, uh, the village version of your redneck little song. Aha. And they were very vulgar and boisterous in the day. And they said dirty words. And when you're 10 years they, old, that and you, they got them on an album on top of it. It was never seen before. It was like, wow, where did you get this? Hmm. Hmm. Is that kind of like the rodeo song? I doubt it. I really doubt it. You can't open it while you're live. But when you, if in fact you do ever open it, the words will, <laughs> they will startle your sense of taste. Oh, really? If indeed you are truly a redneck, yeah. Or a cop lover, because it's basically an anti-policia song by a a group of drug-addled hippies out of the uh, New York City area. There you go. Hmm. Hmm. And um, from what I understand, the tradition continues to this day. People still hate the government. The government's still there, and Nothing's changed. Well. Well, what? What changed? I'm just thinking. You know, everybody. You know, everybody hates the government, and they bash on it and all that fun stuff. Not everybody. Walk away from it. Not it's ev- like a. We must have this because it's something that we just love to hate. Why? I think I could. I I could find something else that I would love to hate. You know, like Brussels sprouts. Oh, now we're gonna get calls. <laughs> So sorry, we don't have a phone number to call in on. Ah. Oh, that's right, because we're on the wire. Oh, yeah. how sad. Aww, but, you know, the sad. good thing about this is Grim's got a lot of slots available. And if people really want to have their, you know, their point of view heard, they should do a radio program and do it like we do it. That's right. Because when that's we right. feel chatty Kathy, we go, hey, you want to do a show? And we go, sure. And then we do a show. There you go. See how that works? It's like magic without the fun part. I know. It's (laughs) it's amazing, I tell (laughs) you. Like being high without the fun part. (laughs) That was funny when I thought that was really. Anyway. Being Mm. high without the fun part, is that like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute? No, it's like doing math or being in line at a grocery store checkout. They're innocent ah. things that they're, you, you go through them because, ah, you know, but when they're happening and they're a big deal, but when they're over, it's like, you can't even remember what you were just pissed off about. Those kind of things. Life. Life. Liberty. It happens. The pursuit of fucking happiness, Johnny. You know, you know that there's only like 12 people that know they got conned out of from the pursuit of property to the pursuit of happiness. They got downgraded. And the paperwork, they didn't even uh-huh. notice. They run around going, ah, I got the right to seek the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> yeah, but you'll never own any property. And they go, what? Uh-huh. Mm. What's wrong, Mary? Did I confuse you coming out of left field with that weird stuff? Coming out of left field? Mm. No. Because mm. no. as a proud property owner, you as well know. <laughs> we don't seem to own it. You. Yeah, but we don't seem to do anything but slave to keep the place, you know, owning it. That's just well, a fantasy that some idiot figured out how to sell the next idiot so he could make a buck off the idiot. 
And here we are, and it's the most natural thing in the world is to sell some poor sap property. Want to buy a bridge? <laughs> oh, yeah. But you see, I think I think that it was actually something that people could do. And then, oh, imagine that. The leeches at Beak stepped in and said, you know, we can take this and we can keep the same wording, but we can change the meaning of it. So they took something good and they provided it to where it's not so good now. Yeah, because, you know, probably. it used to be that people had, you know, like family homesteads or, or um you know, places like that where one generation to the next and they stayed on these places and and everybody was good with that. And then all of a sudden someone come in and said, oh, well, we know that your family has lived there for hundreds of years, but now you have to pay us to continue living there. Because if you don't pay us, then we're going to take what you have worked and built up and made wonderful over the several generations and we're going to take it, and then we're going to make you work it. Work it, work it. <laughs> work it, work it. And that's that's what they do. They take something good, mm. and they give it a quarter twist and make it not so good. I think but they, they convince you that yeah. you're still doing the same thing because they haven't really changed the name. They've just kind of changed the meaning right, how things work when, just a little bit and everybody goes Mary, wait a minute here we're doing the same thing that we've done for centuries but, and yet it's not so pleasant right now but when you smell nipple hair burning doesn't it get your attention i don't think i've ever smelled that smell well let me clue you if you ever do you'll know it'll just be mm. like boom that your brain has never worked so quickly i have i have smelled Butt cheek first, burn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> what have you Eric done to Swalwell her? Should be very okay. happy someone didn't light a match behind him on wow. his MSNBC video because mm. someone someone did you know took that and did it like a heat signature kind of thing with it and I don't know it was probably faked I don't know I don't care it's funnier now. But they did a, a heat signature kind of thing of the video, yeah. and and you could see the poof of hot air coming up from the nether regions <laughs> well, behind him, and it's like huh, he's a stinker. <laughs> when I when I see society, it, what I see now to you know, in my glory days, I see the restrictions of society. It's what I recognize now, not much else. Doesn't seem fun. It doesn't offer anybody any choice. There's no freedoms at all. So why do we keep doing it? What well, is there's no freedoms. There's no freedoms at all because we keep allowing the bullies on the block that just happen to have a few thugs to to push us around. We need to stop allowing the thugs to push us around. There's only one way to do that, and it's almost impossible to follow through on it. Because uh, each of us will have a, our own in, you know, individual reason for why we gave in to the temptation to communicate with somebody that should probably just not be paid any attention to. But, see, on the other side of that coin, it's rude and it's insensitive. So, the razor's edge. You walk in this razor blade in words. And then uh -huh. some people, really they really believe words hurt at this level of communication. Because you disagree about, you know, weed laws or government or presidents that don't, you know, have orange hair. Stuff like that. Yeah. Hmm. What we would probably recognize as the important things in life. And we argue and bitch and banter about them on the Internet. Like the argument is going to change whatever it is you're upset about. It is always going to be what it is, whether you engage it on the Internet or not. Like, say, inoculations. Whether me and you hate them, love them, agree with them, whatever we think or do doesn't affect the whole thing for some reason. You know, that individual part just... Eh. And there's no real groups of people that stand up together and demand anything except Oh, the rich need more tax cuts. And those guys got guns, so they get their way. 
I say we should cut everybody's taxes. Okay, I'm all for it. Because <laughs> you know what? If we can't get together and build ma roads, then do we really need roads? Well, if we don't need them bad enough to go out and do them ourselves and maintain them properly, because it's somebody else's job, well, they created that freaking job. Well, Duh. The restrictions and regulations. That Yes, because now you must have an engineer because in order to design <laughs> this. People are and so... And i got to tell you, this weekend while I was what? down visiting the youngest daughter, and they had engineers that decided how to repair the road that I have to drive on to get to my daughter's house without having to <laughs> go a rather long and circuitous route. So I'm driving down this road, and all of a sudden, here's these little roadblock thingies that say, well, we're not really stopping you, but you got to scooch over, and we're working on this road. And then they ain't working on the road. They're tearing the shit up. Hmm. And the lanes are barely wide enough for a vehicle to fit down. And, oh, my Lord. And I, when I got to my daughter's house, I asked her, how long have they been working on that? All summer. Mm-hmm. They have torn up the road. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what, they, that's what they've accomplished, working on it all summer long. And I'm thinking, there's some engineers involved in this shit somewhere. I just know there are. Because <laughs> I know how those people work. I've had to deal with them, their people. And they're freaking crazy. They they're very self-important. Not, they're not crazy. They're, yeah, they're crazy. What am I thinking? Well, you got me. I can't. Sure of themselves. I was going to try to defend them, but you know what? No, I think all of us are a little bit tapped in the, you know, brain department to some level or another. I don't think anybody's well, yeah. immune to that, but some people are tilted just a little bit more obviously than others. Depends on the group that you feel you belong to to judge the other monkey for whatever the other monkey's doing. That doesn't please you at the time. And you know what? Hmm. Sometimes Hmm. being deemed crazy in an insane world is not a bad thing. Why just sometimes? I think all the time. But No, because there are some people that even though the inside... Even the insane world recognizes that person's batshit. Ah, so I've got one of my weird questions that I, I try to get weird answers to. Comes out, they, okay. they, they, I write them down because they pop up out of nowhere for no particular reason. And then I think, hey, this would be fun to ask Mary or Vinny on the radio. So we've got this idea about how when we interact with other people, we have the ability to improve their life, right? This is the mental understanding. We we all seem to share this. And then when you start thinking a little bit deeper into it, you find out that you can control that too if you want to. Because, right? Because like, Uh uh, oh, I don't know. Say somebody had an opposing opinion about, oh, say something as far-fetched as cannabis. Say that the other guy thought cannabis was the devil's lettuce, and I obviously don't. The two of us would appear to people to be disagreeing about something. But the reality of it is you can't have a stand against something based on ignorance. Ignorance doesn't give you knowledge. It gives you something to scream about and make a fool out of yourself over. Yeah. That's my side of that. Well, and if you are willfully ignorant, Mm. then by golly, you go out of your way to shout down those that are making you uncomfortable Mm. because they happen to actually know something that makes your beliefs go right out the window. And it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling. And so those that are willfully ignorant have a tendency to be quite vocal. Yeah. And letting you know, you're a big old meanie poo-poo head, yeah. and you need to stop doing that. Racist! Well, there's so many topics that... Uh, did I lose you or something? No, I'm still here. And I just went... And I don't know why. Okay, anyway, it was, hopefully it was just my headphones. But, uh, ah. well, but I mean, I I don't believe 
that people really have the ability to improve somebody else's life. No, you it don't. looks like that. I mean, it, it can be explained that way in words and manipulations, but everything that you do, you you do it. So I would assume everything I do, I do it. And you don't have any idea what any of that is that I do. You just you're you're busy doing your own. Hmm. You know yeah. your daily life and the the things that you encounter and what you see. I don't see those things, but I do see similar things. Like instead of a farmer, I got a, a Dane. You know? mm-hmm. But it's the same thing in in a sense because they're. It's the uh, same thing, only different. Isn't that strange? And yet, mm-hmm. and yet, we'll argue and banter and bitch at each other about whether the fucking money's real or not. With a tw- with with a, a blatant government that tells you from the day you can understand what they're talking about that your government is in debt but they never tell you why they're in debt they just tell you that they're in debt and hope that you never pursue the the door that says well this is why because it was going to be that way that's a plan to you know to explain it designed that way which is what i mean it was planned why not why design plan is the same fucking thing in my mind I don't see it any different. It's like the other the other day, Vinny, Vinny got me all flustered, and I was thinking about how the cops treated me when I was a kid, and about this one particular thing this cop did. I felt victimized, and I, I and I went, ah, oh, fuck, I hate that word. And then I went, I didn't say that, but I did say it. So, you know, we're just people, and what other people do doesn't make me feel anything unless I want it to. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I was trying to get at. That, that whole long thing I just went through, I don't know if it worked or not. But yeah. just as well as you can't hurt my life because you can't do anything. It's me doing my life. So all this, out, you know, this outside in, interruptions, I call it, get people threatening me with you know, words and ideas that... Mm, I guess if you live if you live under that kind of mentality, it would it would really bother you. Yeah, well, you know, people. There's an awful lot of people out there that just flat ass don't realize that no matter what somebody else says, you yourself are responsible for how you take it. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, insult or a, a joke can be the same thing to one guy. You take it either way he wants to. But yeah. we're see now. Here's my thing: is I don't think that I'm in control of taking input to the level of I can always be on top of that. I take it the way I want to. I'm still human and conditioned by society, and I still got all these false ideas about your words do this and your words or your words don't do shit unless I want them to. <laughs> so. How do you it's just like your actions don't do shit unless you want them to either because you know unless it, they're done directly to you they don't do shit and that's so really rare I mean when you think of how crowded we are and, and how rare is it you bump into somebody in a store actually bump on, into them it happens to me occasionally once every couple of months maybe where I won't be completely paying attention and I'll turn too quick and bump somebody Hmm. That's as close yeah. to violence as I've been since I was young. Now I'm not young, so we'll just use that age. But it's been a while, and I well, think... the closest I've come to violence <clears throat> lately is I was coming in the house with the doggies, and they wanted treats, and I was trying to walk around them, and Bubba decided, oh. Mama's here. That means I can flop on the floor and squirm and wiggle right in front of her so she goes down. That's the closest thing I've come to violence. At least and he the did. Dog. I went yeah. I went down fast. <laughs> it's like, damn it, Bubba. And he looked at me like, What? I'm playing. Don't you want to play? After you give me a treat? <laughs> ah. Uh, oh. Rose Prince. wants his belly rubbed. <laughs> He's asking. He's not asking me, right? 
I I don't know. That he just you, says, you I know, want a belly rub. Those words fall oh, on Oh, he wants ears. to rub his belly. Excuse me. The kitty cat he shared. Sorry. Never mind. It's I got to see, see a picture of the kitty. You're so pervy. You just assume without finishing the story. Yeah, I do. I don't. <laughs> I get accused of that many times. And sometimes I misquote shit. You fuck up names and dates and all that garbage that I don't care about. But I got the idea right. Did you know that electricity is not good for us? You know how you know that? That electricity is not... It's absolutely well, actually, not good electricity, for us. electricity is good for us okay. because that our bodies true. run on electricity. Right, right, okay. But electricity well, that we are being sold that, in its current form ding, ding, is ding, not ding, ding. good for us. No, and, and it's being done on purpose. They could, they could oh, bypass yeah. all this crap. But the people that make the money... They'll make way more money doing the shit that they do than doing it properly or correctly. Yet, they've got a whole bunch of other idiots all convinced in this climate change crap. And you can fix it with taxes. And What's broken is they use oil. There you go. There's the whole fucking corner of your problem right there. Get off the fucking oil. Replace it with hemp. Ten years from now, you'll be telling stories about you know, the dinosaurs were a fraud. But it was fun while it lasted. Ha, 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 ha. See, and, and I think oil is just an, is symptomatic as well. I think the real problem is we are not um, in tune to the frequencies of Mother Earth. Because we are actually supposed to be in tune with the frequencies. Our mind vibrates at the same frequency level as it's the Schumann resonance or or Mother Earth. And so if we were, if we did everything to where it was in accordance, vibrating at the same frequency as the Mother Earth, mm. even oil mm. would, you know, even hemp as a fuel would not necessarily be needed because we've already, we're dealing with the Schumann resonance and that is all of the energy that we need. Well, yeah, well, a lot of what they use the bulk of the resources for is traveling. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. And it's not, it doesn't seem to me that everybody that travels, travels for pleasure. A lot of these people travel because their job dictates they do this and that in this place, blah, blah, blah. And here we yeah. are with all this technology up the wazoo, cameras in everybody's bathroom. And instead of using the internet for this kind of stuff, people are still being forced to travel. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to cost more electricity because, you know, I mean, what? It's always going to be some stupid argument from a from this overeducated population of dumb wives that we have seemed to have been blessed with somehow. And the creep wrongly educated is maybe more appropriate. Well, this... they're, yeah, they're getting an awful lot of information, but it's wrong information or skewed information. Yeah, I've been mocking it for years. It. Yeah, yeah. It, so it be lies, we all know true. that. Ah, if you don't know that by now, okay, if you can hang around in say Real Liberty Media chat room and, and not understand the foundations of these ideas that we get stuck. Uh, they're called conspiracy theories because the truth is just painful is what it is. Well, and I think they call them conspiracy theories because too many people would just totally freak out if they called them what they actually are, which is conspiracy facts. Right, but the truth is so opposite of what we're presented with. And people are used to it. They're just numb to the whole damn thing. Don't care. Apathy. Uh, well, you or, know what really, what? you know what really gets me is they call those conspiracy theories, and yet we have um, Big Bang theory, and we have uh, the theory of gravity, and we have all of these other theories, you know, medical theories and scientific theories and all this other stuff, and those we're just supposed to swallow as if they're really, really yummy stuff and oh so good for us. But when someone comes up with a conspiracy theory, oh my God, that's bad. Well, you know really? who you know who taught me to to uh, make fun of Einstein? Who? Nikola Tesla. 
<laughs> yeah. But do you know that the, the power that Tesla didn't have, that Einstein did have? He had the power of the people with the money back in yeah, him. Is he, what he was Jewish, so you couldn't see. The world is lied to by the information people that support us with information tell us all this rubbish and crap and nonsense. It's got nothing to do with anything real. But how do you know that? See, it's a personal way to interpret the news. And most people don't want to be weird and thought of as some kind of nut job. So they believe it. Oh, that's real because I saw it. I saw the film. Oh, the fire's over there. Well, that, okay. How I mean all this is I think that my life is just what I can see around me. Not what I can see on the computer and the TV set and all this other shit. Cameras and, you know, magnifying glasses and microscopes and telescopes. Just what I can fucking see. So it's yep. simplified my life. I don't. I don't seem to care so much about what I can't see. <laughs> it's very strange. It, I guess it's uh, maybe I would be called a narcissist or uh, a hedonist at the very least. You know, because my concerns are not the fucking starving kids in China don't interest me one way or the other. I don't live in China, and if I did. Wherever I'd live would not be where people were starving because that's not how I've lived my life. Wherever I've traveled, uh, people were always in abundance. There was plenty to go around and nobody was inconvenienced with me being there. Now, not liking me on a personal level, maybe, but the the culture didn't shift any damn direction because I was in it. Well, maybe that's because... You didn't want to shift it in any direction. Or maybe it's really not possible to do that. It's just a matter of how you personally look at that idea. Yeah. Some people, other people think, oh, I can shake your world and do it. Well, you can if, you, if you're allowed to. Or if you yes. use brute force. But that's not being allowed to. So, no, you're wrong. See, you can take a negative action and, you know, to prove you're right, and you, to the face of things, you seem to be right, but the truth of it is, you just, you broke all the rules by attacking the other guy with violence. But we don't live with a code like that anymore. Now we got law enforcement, punishment, and all this and that, instead of do the right thing and keep your hands off the other guy. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. I think not speaking the language here, has taught me that I'm not the only one that lives the live and let live life because there's no other way to explain the uh, nonviolence. Uh huh. There's very little aggravation. And people in the little social areas, they'll run into somebody they you know, know. They'll stand there and talk for an hour, right? In the walkways and any, wherever they're at, just like they're, uh, like they don't even know you're there. This little tiny, you know, it's not public. It's not like uh, Copenhagen. It's different. Then, yeah. Yeah. I guess it would be how I'd feel if I visited your small town. Because everybody that's there, that's been there, they know everybody. So there's a, a different approach to how they see the world. Uh-huh. Well, like with you traveling. You see the world differently as a traveler than somebody that you've known your whole life that's never been out in Nebraska. Yeah. Well, and I do, yeah, I notice when other people, you know, those that have lived in the same place forever and ever and ever, it's like, don't you even want to at least go check out someplace else? What do they tell you? Nope, nope. I don't want to go there. I don't need to go there. I'm happy where I'm at. Isn't that a good thing? Well, I'm I'm glad that they're happy where they're at, yeah. and yet there's part of me that thinks you live in a very confined one perspective when there's so many other perspectives out there that you could get to know. You can come back to your one perspective, but why don't you go out and at least see a few other perspectives to know for sure that 
This is your perspective. Well, what kind of reasons do people tell you when you ask them that? You know, for the most part, they just go, well, I just don't want to. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. What's wrong? Okay. okay. All right. Now, what is wrong with, with that as a response? Why does that response not satisfy you? It satisfied me. I was like, hey, cool response. That's what I'd say. I don't feel like it. Well, I, I'm... The innocence, right? Mary, this is what I mean by interpretation. It's all different. You say something, and I might hear it completely different than how you thought you said it because of my personal experience. Okay? So yeah. I, I try to show you, you know, I try to uh, use you as a person to, to talk to about these kind of weird ideas because they've gotten us in a lot of trouble. 9-11, Saudi Arabia, I mean, how many... Fucking years this has been going on, and these idiots are still trying to blame the Saudis for something that. I figure it like this: the Saudis and the Jews are together up to their eyeballs in whatever this is. So they pick the other guy. You know, divide and conquer. Get you picking one side when it was both of them. <laughs> yeah, it's too big of a thing for. It, all the mo big money players were involved. They made fortunes off the stock market the, that day that this happened. Betting on, against all the right airlines. I mean, insider trading laws that just, if I would have done that, I'd have been caught and put in jail. But all the right people did it, so it was okay. And that's how we live, Miss Mary. I guarantee. Yep. Well, that's how I see this. The world is weird. But it's not uh, not real. If, now, if I go into it, then it becomes real again. But this distance, ah, no. How can how can you living like you do? How could you possibly take the misery of the city life home to your you know, country, little rural thing? Where would there be no room for it? You know, when you go to sleep, you're not thinking about all that stuff. But there are people that do. They're consumed by this uh, void. It's not real. It's a bunch of stories. It's no different than telling people about Star Trek or Santa Claus going to the moon, you know? Yeah. You know, because yeah. like the real miracles in life, to me now, I've got green things growing in the windowsills in November in Denmark. Fresh, green, brand new leaves are sprouting, and I don't know how the hell this works. They're not supposed to do this. This is the time of year when everything's supposed to wither and die, and I got green windows. <laughs> so, hmm. of course. You've got green windows. Yeah, because huh? the plants in the window. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Well, I didn't Ten grow thousand. up. I didn't grow up doing the things that I spend my time doing today. See, life shifted. So I had a, a lot of different experience in life that to judge what I wanted to do by. Where some people, like my dad, didn't have a lot of choices. He worked for a company and he retired from that company. So that was you know, him. Me, I did a lot of shit in the, in the same amount of years. I did more different kind of jobs than he did. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of a cool thing as well. Well, that's okay. And that's how I meant by it. if somebody was pleased with where they live enough to never want to leave it. Wow, that must be some really special place. That's the way I heard that. Me, not you. Okay. You go, wow, that must, because that's kind of how I feel about where I'm at now. I was walking to the store tonight and it's not freezing yet, but it's a little windy and a little chilly. And I got the dog out there, and I'm walking along. And it just, every now and again, it dawns on me where I'm at. Yeah. Well, I don't think about it very often, because I guess familiarity breeds contempt. And you lose the, the, the thrill, goes away, and all that. But here, when I take my walks, I, I'm always reminded somehow about, wow, look where the fuck you're at. So that's new to me. And see, I I look at you doing that and think, 
look at all of the different places he's been. He's got all of those to compare with, and he really enjoys this. Mm. And then I see these people. I, and mm. you know, it's it's all well and good for them. You know, if they if that's what they want to do. But a lot of times when I get into discussions like that, it's because someone says, "Oh, well, those people over there, they should yada yada yada." <laughs> well, how do you know? Are have you ever been there? Do you know what's going on there? Yeah. How do you know that those people over there should oughta? You know, if you've got nothing to compare to besides where you where you're at and where you've always been, then I think it's a little bit uh disingenuous to to judge other people's behavior. I'm just because. typing while you were yakking. That's fine. That's fine. I just, I don't know. I guess, and I I am not necessarily what one would consider a world traveler, although I have been across the pond a couple of times. See, right. What but, does it take? I mean, come on. Yeah. What's yeah. a world traveler? Mm-hmm. Eh, you know, I'd, I've been all over a lot of the United States, but I haven't been, you know, to actually drive or see scenery and stuff east coast wise a whole lot but it, you know yeah so i've seen a lot of the united states i've seen a lot of other places in picture books and mm-hmm. on videos mm-hmm. and that kind of shit but i still i just don't like traveling that well if i could travel instantaneously if i could go mm-hmm. huh i want to go have coffee with flash and and cycles and Oop. then just poof, <laughs> i would be there yeah. Then, yes, I would be one hell of a world traveler until I had one of those weird-ass wild hair ideas pop into my head. That, wow, I wonder what it's like in Iraq in, in the middle of summer. Boom. Oh, shit, it's hot here. You know? <laughs> so you got to learn to control those impulses sometimes. But I just, I guess I have a really big problem with people casting judgment on all of these different places and how they live their lives. Oh, okay. They never yeah. lived anywhere but this one little dot. Yeah. Well, because of the built-in enemies that you get in society, that usually part, you know, plays a part in it. Yeah. Because I got a, well, I had, I have, I had a Jewish mom. One of those uh, racist against the Arab Jew moms, and she could never see the uh, the good side of a dark colored face because of her beliefs in how these people blah 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 all that crap. Yeah. All right, now we grew up in L.A., not London, where she grew up, so our life was no way there was no way to compare it to my mom because there was you know no it wasn't parallel yeah you know the life in the growing up in the 40s in England was way different than the life growing up in the 60s in California you know politically financially socially all these things had changed and then you can imagine that well now you you went through it but the, the 60s compared to today, uh, makes today look pretty bad, I think. And yet, I hear people complain about the people that came from the 60s. Well, I don't hear people. I hear one person. But it's funny how uh, politically-minded people are always looking for a scapegoat, a generation to blame for the shit that bankers fucking do. (sighs) These people really... Mary, I know. Are you sitting down? You might not believe it. There are okay. there are people on RLM that believe the government makes decisions on your behalf. They have they're clueless. How could they possibly think a thing like that? Oh, but see, the government does make decisions on your behalf because okay. they say they represent you. Now they aren't doing them on your behalf, as in for the betterment of your life but they are making these decisions on your behalf and other countries around the world judge the rest of the people in America because of the nimrods that get elected into 
representative and senatorial and POTUS positions or mm -hmm. selected, however you prefer to look at that. But so they are representative as in they represent the rest of the country, even though the rest of the country thinks most of them are full of shite. Oh, that sounds very bad. It is very bad, yeah. but yes, when they when they say I'm doing this on your behalf, they are doing it on our behalf. They are doing, you know, instead of you making decisions for your life that would be better for you, we're just going to take that onus upon ourselves. And by the way, when we make these decisions, they really won't be for your betterment, but it will be on your behalf. See, there's that play on words. <laughs> yep. It's like uh it's like when uh when a guy talks to a girl and she says maybe to get rid of him. Because some guys out there believe maybe means something. It doesn't yes. it maybe means go the fuck away is what maybe means. In any in any language, in any gender, in any kind of relationship, financial or personal. You don't want to ever hear the word maybe, ever. That yeah. was a public announcement from In a Perfect World. And me and Mary agree on this one. Go figure. It must be. I must have hit pay dirt that time. But I've been around, yeah. you know, I, I've been around the world uh, enough to know that it's me doing it. Not everybody else ain't doing shit to me. I'm doing it. And, but it's, yeah. it's hard to explain it in words that everybody could actually get a grip on and see what it means because it's an individual fucking thing for all of us to see it. It's very hard to explain because you're going to find a little nuance about something that's going to take you in a different direction than I'd go in. Yeah. Yeah. Like Sir getting such a big giggle out of that butt guy's name. You know, that he was gay and from South Bend, Indiana. and all. It, <laughs> the j joke just kept getting better for her because she's picked up on all this American slang over the years. Well, and it is quite funny, right, actually. Right, but if it was, okay, and if I hadn't been the American influence into her, her daily life to be a, a victim of that freaking name, <laughs> where she had to read it or hear it or however she found it, you know. She has a way. I think I really think that's a circle frequency. She has this frequency <laughs> that attracts all of this loony weirdness. And then she sees it and just gets tickled and she just bubbles the whole world around her. <laughs> okay, that's that's kind of a way to put it, I suppose. Well, it's like I tell my mom, my mother has got a portal to something in her basement and she'll I'll go down to visit her, and she'll say, I don't know where this came from, the portal in your basement, mother. It opens <laughs> every night. To another dimension. And it, yeah. and it <laughs> comes in through that portal. But yeah. Why? Because <laughs> it's Grandma Jeannie's house, and <laughs> everything is welcome at Grandma Jeannie's house. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, all it's right. crazy. Now, back, I just want to back up to this. I got this restrictions thing crossed my mind again. Right? Uh-huh. Now, I, I'm not talking about mm, like a personal feeling about shit. I mean, how do the restrictions of life that you recognize as restrictions identify something and then tell me this is why you feel it's restrictive? Um. And I would use the driver's license if it was me being asked. So something, you know... Something in that realm where you you abide by shit because you, you're being forced to, yeah, and you know it. Well, but you, if you argue about it, you sound like a nut job. So you might as well go with the flow because you're not going to win this one. You're never going to win the driver's license argument with somebody that has a driver's license. True. <laughs> and oh, well, it's kind of like the marriage license. Okay, or the same thing. License, yeah. Or yeah. Or a library card. You cannot go in and borrow a book unless you have a library card. Can't break a law without permission. Yeah, it's a little permission slip. 
We have restrictions on such things. You have now entered a restricted area. What? You are not allowed. Do you, do you feel restricted in movement or in restricted in how you're treated? You know, like the, I feel like the treatment of the state, whenever I've endured their behavior, they've always been like belittling and, and nasty to me. And condescending. Oh, yeah. horribly. Yeah, and I would say that if you judge a book by its cover, I don't look like the guy that's going to sound like he knows what he's talking about. You know, <laughs> the Snuffles appearance... Letting me know, a butterfly farted. The appearance and the voice don't seem to match for some reason. Let's just say that. Well, see, and I think that's that's just... That's what has to do with the, the actual belief and acceptance of external authorita. Proving it's you know? an illusion in the first place. Because it's external yeah. and everything external, you make it up with your head. And we yeah. can't get this information in a simple fucking way so that we can just talk about it. It's got to have all this scientific crap attached to it that we're either for or against. There's your divide and conquer. Built in divide yeah. and conquer, then you can be on the side that smirk and not look like a fucking idiot. And that's how we're trapped into these idiotic ways that we live. The same thing, yeah. the punishment is the freaking reward. It's stupid. I do not understand, like Hillary or Trump, lesser, lesser evil. Did anybody pay attention to the time he spent in New York supporting Hillary? I mean, come on. Where where are all these people when shit's really happening? They don't know. They oh, hey, this guy is running for he he he's a billionaire. He must know stuff. And that's as far as they go with it. And see, there's a lot of that stuff. You can look at what people have done in their past and you can you can get a foundational base for your uh opinion of them. And yet what they've done in their past, it's like with I've done a lot of things in my past that weren't necessarily kosher, <gasps> weren't necessarily Dirty nice, Ooh. but I learned from them and I moved on. And I don't think I'm an absolutely horrid and wretched person anymore, but there were times, especially when I had teenage-itis, where I was a Captain Assholio. <laughs> yeah. I know this, I recognize this, and I also recognize that I don't want to be known as that, so I started making changes. So, with people, what they did in their past, you know, they were, they were doing what they thought they should do, or what, you know, would be, work out best for them at that time. Hmm. Now, if it wasn't best for anybody else, well, so be it. You know, part of that so be it union. Now, is this like restrictions but, or what category does this fall under? For, uh, this this falls about? under the the uh, the uh, responsibility thing, I guess. Because restrictions basically take away your responsibility. Once you allow someone to apply restrictions, then you lose some of your personal responsibility. Okay, and then, you, but then you've, you've now got, got external restrictions, and you've got the duality argument to back that up, so it looks like a good thing. See, instead of instead of us all having the same concept about, say, murder, murdering is wrong. Okay, period. All right, say that was the standard, then you wouldn't have all this punishment, gauges of punishment, degrees of punishment for a thing that we all agree is wrong. So what we've managed to been tricked into is to take it as common and real through film and, you know, education, movies, church, all these things, outside things. Yeah, been desensitized to it. Exactly. And it's not real in your freaking daily life unless maybe you're a butcher or something. And then if you are a butcher, why would you go home and watch horror movies for entertainment? That doesn't make sense. No. But no. We, we don't live among... A, a population of people that care about making any sense. They want to be right. They want to win. They don't give a yeah. shit about what they're fucking doing. It makes no fucking sense. So that, there's a lot more of us than you, and we got guns. So I'd shut up if I was you. And that's how we're treated. Yeah. That society, you, know, you can have your freaking society. Then. I don't want that. You know what I want? 
You want you want a hemp based society. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. In a perfect world, my world would run on hemp, and cannabis would be probably it would can cannabis would probably wipe out the poppy seed. Nobody would even in fifteen years. Nobody even think about it. Wouldn't even be a, a an interest. It's the deprivation of life that makes people behave the way they do. You tell them no. It's something they build into us somehow. And when you tell a human being no, one out of ten of those people is going to revolt against you for doing that. Yeah, nine, there's going to be some spite going on. Nine are going to comply like little babies and do whatever they're freaking told. And one is going to spit right in your face and go, oh, do something about it, baby, while they look up at you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's life, but it's planned. There's no reason for this. This is a design disruption in our life as government and education. All these things that are supposed to help us, don't, they don't. They enslave you. They make you a follower of a con job, of a bullshit story. You might as well join well, a fucking cult and do yourself in on a moon unit trip, you know? Well, it's kind of like this whole concept of scarcity yep. and how how um, prehistoric man mm. had to fight and eke out and all of this other fun stuff. When if you stop and you look around, and especially <laughs> if you've done any reading in ancient remedies, you know, or um, some of the um, different things about um, – you know, living in the wild, you know, people that different plants that you can eat and that you can make clothes out of and all that other fun stuff. And yet we were, we have been taught that way back in caveman days, they were hunkered down. The only reason they had fire was because lightning hit a tree and, you know, they were always cold and they had to have critter skins to stay warm and always starving and fighting over food. And when you look around, you go outside, and if you know all the different things that are edible, which I'm sure they did because they were observant individuals and they watched the other critters, they knew there was no scarcity of food and ways to stay warm and or cool. But we weren't taught that. We were taught that they had such a rough and rugged life and things, food was scarce and shelter was scarce. And no, it's a bunch of bullshit. But, you know, you repeat that bullshit often enough and people start thinking, hey, maybe that is the way it was. Even if some still remember that, no, it wasn't like that because they figure those people will eventually die off and then you won't have that older generation to refer back to. Well, I think that's why they want to kill off a lot of old people, why they're, I think, intentionally ouch. giving Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and dementia to people because they want those people dying off so oh, that the yeah. younger generations they can't the get truth. that information, yeah. Yeah. Well, not it, directly from those that lived through it, at least. It's like all these bullshit ways that they explain these huge monuments that have been built on Earth by whoever in our history, but they've mm -hmm. always got these, like the, the magic bullet story about, you know, Kennedy. And it's always some crazy weird story about how that happened instead of whatever the truth is. The truth would just, if, if we were exposed to the truth as a life form and lived on that, we wouldn't be where we are now. So if you can agree with that statement and you understand the dishonesty is what keeps us where we are. Oh, yeah. Honest oh, yeah. people do not suffer uh, the life of well, somebody that would say they're suffering. I don't feel I'm yeah. suffering, and I would attribute I it not. to my uh, decent freaking lifestyle. And, of course, according to paper law, I'm not living one of those. But I've done the, you know, the most of it. I got legally married. I got in the country with my passport and all that, you know, the paper chase crap. I did all that. Mm -hmm. So, but smoking the hash, it's technicality. Fifty-seven yeah. percent of the people here want hash to be legalized, decriminalized, somethingalized. Get it off the thing and stop arresting people for doing it. 
but they can't get it to the court just because of that damn American freaking war on drugs money they keep pumping in here. Yeah. And it's huge. It's not small stuff. I mean, it's not uh, Israel big, but it's big. Big enough to keep them doing it. You know, they're employees, and that's what employees do is what they're fucking told. They're order followers. Yeah. Well, how hard you is know, it? It's, it's, it's just like, you know, you're talking about that, and it's like with the pyramids. You know, they tell us this stupid-ass story of it took thousands of slaves and all of these years, and they put these great big megalithic blocks on wood rollers. Okay, number one, where'd all the trees come from to make the wood rollers? But that's never – don't pay attention. Stop thinking legit, uh, legit, um What is it? Logistically. Stop well, thinking logistically. There, Just remember, we told you it was slaves that built those, well, and it took hundreds of years to do it. Okay, but Mary. In, in, and then in the next sentence, they say, even with all of our technology, we could not build those with the precision that they were built. Well, that's debatable because of a guy named Lee Skelman out of, out of Florida. He built what was called the Coral Castle, right? He was moving. Yes. He, I've been to the damn thing. I saw it with my own two eyes, but but he, he did not use modern technology. I, to build I, that. Wait, 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 wait. He used old technology to build that. That's uh-huh. what I'm trying to tell you. Let me let me interrupt you for I, for something that's worth <laughs> an interrupt. Uh, okay. But, okay. Now Larry Woods was more familiar with him than I was, but I'd been to the place, and but he knew him by his name. He was also an inventor. Lead Scalman, and he built the Coral mm-hmm. Castle. Well, they've uncovered footage of him actually using some of the mechanisms that he built to lift those enormous pieces of coral. Uh-huh. And it was done with um, h- uh, hooks and pulleys, balance. Yep. So mm-hmm. it doesn't matter about the weight and the size of the, the part you're moving. It matters about the machines you use to get it there. So they take your mind off. Uh, see, they, they teach us how ignorant we are and how brilliant the 20th century and blah, 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 blah bullshit. Uh-huh. Okay, I with agree all of with our you. modern yeah. technology. Just another way to enslave us, please. It, and to try and keep in the forefront of our mind that, wait a minute here, we are more advanced than those people way back then. Not possible. I think it's the same. It's a different version of the story. You know, this, I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> it, to me, it does. But we're living in reruns. You know, the 60s were the 90s with a, you know, with a twist. Yeah. It just depends on what age bracket you're in when they happen. You know, where, oh, yeah. where your control starts taking you. Because we're all seem to be controlled by outside influence. You follow things, yep. or you like this, or you don't like that. You avoid this. You try this. Shit like that. And yeah. some people. Oh, I gotta, I gotta respond to Prince real quick. Oh, it's Puma John Punku. Prince. On, okay. Yeah, hey. Puma Punku is very interesting, and um, there's an observation deck video about that where. Um, he puts forth a few suppositions on that, I guess, would be a good way. Suppose they had the ability to, and um, and he's. it also deals with, like, some of the sculptures that you look at and you go, how the hell did they get that detail in that sculpture without screwing up that big-ass chunk of marble? So uh, check out the observation deck on, on YouTube prints you would he's got a couple of videos along those lines that i think you would find quite fascinating well okay, that was very you, informative i feel very wow i'm so smart now there you well, go i have like what am i going to do it's too much okay i'm going to post on the rlm the link i was talking about and it shows okay. him it shows him working well see that's what i mean is we're 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 always held back. Can you imagine if people had been told the truth about Tesla instead of the lies about Edison? We, we live in a bullshit, lie-based fucking existence. It's just pitiful, right? So mm-hmm. how do you get out of it's, it? It's part of controlling the narrative. And what you, I've, 
I've decided over the years that whatever I get told, the first thing I do is go and see if I can find anything that that debunks it. Like, for example? And then I, well, you know, like, because um, actually the first time I heard about Ed, or um, Tesla mm-hmm. was maybe 10 years ago, mm-hmm. showing my path I went down. Sure. Huh. But, I didn't find um, out until 86, and that was because the guy I was working with, he was an electrician, and somebody turned him on to it, or I would have never known. I don't. I mean, an, maybe I would have eventually, but not at that time. It was the only yeah, opportunity. See, it, it wasn't. It wasn't in the forefront of what I was interested in. It for quite a while. But I was. I was being a mom. The but knowledge did didn't help about, me, Mary. Yeah, see? when I did learn about Tesla, yeah. and and uh, you know, because it was like hootie doody waddy, and so I started reading stuff about him and and seeing a lot of the things that he did that other people were taking credit for and you know like the radio marconi got mm. got the patent but actually no he didn't Tesla, no he didn't it he, got taken away from him he never got the patent it was there was a supreme court ruling that uh, marconi took it that he, he was a student of tesla's and that that he took he gave him he gave it to him to work with but not to claim as his own that was tesla's work yeah, I know it was Tesla's work. Okay, but in school, in, in 1968, they were teaching me that Marconi invented the radio. Yeah. And later on yeah. in life, I found out it was a 1948 Supreme Court ruling that says the opposite, that he was, uh, it was Tesla. So I've yeah. read so much conflicting but, shit over the years, Miss Mary, is my point. I'm just, I'm not bragging yeah. about what I know. I'm confused see, about hearing I had, every I was doing possible. a little incremental thing because Marconi actually did try and get it through the patent, and he did get it awarded it until it got – it had to go to the Supreme Court and take it away from him. So, yeah, I think there was a French but, guy that beat him too on top of yeah. the whole thing. So yeah. ah, it's all of stories and crap. You Who know, knows? and I don't think anybody's really inventing or or discovering any of this mm, shit. Discovering I maybe. This, yeah, I I, I like the word. Was, I like the word discover. Discovery. Okay, all right. Well, not if you're doing it for yourself for the first time. It's just a discovery. You know, it, rediscovery would be finding something twice. Finding somebody else's shit is still. It's a matter of how much uh, press they got before you. So. There are people today that believe Tesla is a brand name on a fucking car. They got no idea yeah. who he was, yeah, what he a did. A car that catches on fire, by the uh, way. Yeah, so this whole thing looks really bad. See, and I think that's an intentional thing. Here comes my little paranoid mind. I <laughs> think people were starting to find out enough about Tesla that they were starting to go, okay, if they lied about this, because that was the one thing that really got me. If they lied about this, what else are they lying about? And that's when I started yeah. questioning shit, seriously. Right. But, you know, a lot of people are starting to research Tesla. There's Tesla societies. There's all of this other fun stuff. And all of a sudden, here comes this guy from South Africa. And he decides to build this vehicle and call it a Tesla. And it's not a real good thing. And so people are starting to equate the name Tesla with what he is doing. Yep, exactly. That's the way generational, Mary. And that's part of that distraction shit. And they control they the ever history. So good at. Well, they control uh-huh. the history on top of everything. So certain ideas get buried in time and they're never brought up. So they created this thing called the internet. We figured out a way to keep the stories alive. Yep. Yeah, and I, I sure. listened to a talk by Michio Kaku mm-hmm. the other day, and he said that that um, it was uh, physicists that built the Internet, that built the World Wide Web and all of this other fun stuff, not those that said that they did. You know, it was the physicists that built it, and they just gave it to the world, and the government said, for national security purposes, we'll just take that. Which, whether that's true or not, I do believe the government's stepping in and going, for national security purposes, we'll just take that. 
Because everything, it's always for national security. It's for your own security, you lying piece of shit. That's the only reason you're taking it. I know I'm being vulgar, but Hmm. they always say national security. It's national security because in order to keep the nation the way you want it to be, but for your own security, uh, when that, you've got to hide this information. When that TSA agent's giving you a little goose giggle, I mean, come on. Tell me that you're just not tickled inside for the attention. Just a little bit. Go on. Deny it. I dare you. I want to go all Eric Swal or whatever Swalwell on him. I wish I could vomit at will at times like that. When the cops, yeah. you know, or shit my pants or some just disgusting... When some other human fucking life form is accosting me in a physical fashion. But. They can do it because they have a special uniform. (laughs) It's okay for them to do it. It's such a, it's a such, okay. To me, it's a sickening thing to see other people go through. So, the mind of the person that enjoys watching somebody else have their physical being being invaded by a foreign object to find shit goes against just everything I've ever thought or felt in life. I like freedom and keep away from me. I, you know, I'm not a big huggy, squeezy, lovey dovey kind of guy. I like my space. And as, and as small as I am, I still require a lot of fucking space. And, I've never, I've never in my life have I ever had a problem acquiring a lot of fucking space so that I could be the large person I truly am. <laughs> ah, see, you put out a vibe that keeps people out to of or space. From, it works both ways because yes. water suits well, its own level, dear. So it, it yeah. drew circle in. <laughs> well, exactly, and there's a couple of kids I kept running into down up. Uh, Downtown, I ran into them twice, uh, and they—they're just interesting kids. They live above the bar where I drink, but it's been winter's come on. Cirque's been home a lot, so I've hardly been bothered. But these two kids are real interested to talk to me because I'm from America, and the difference in their behavior and how they encounter me when I run into them tells me this. You know, there's. Mm-hmm. Because there's people have different interests in you as a person, and yep. as you get older, you start recognizing some people really want to know something that you might be able to tell them, and it's kind of cool. I, I'm like looking forward to it. But so yeah. far, it's just been yeah. I ran into one of them on the way home from the store the other day. I had something I had to go do. Blah blah blah. I was in a hurry to go back to search, and I didn't have time, but. It, we figured out, well, I think we'll do this this week and so on and so how. And, uh, but the behavior of other people in your uh, interactions, it dictates, I guess, the level of interest they have and how you got where you are. Because some people are, aren't real interested. You know, eh, they've been around the world. They know, they understand. They've been to America, not interested. And other people are looking forward to going and they're looking for pointers or countries that you've been to they might not have thought of going to yet. Yeah. I ran into a lot of that. I went through a lot of it, seeking the older guys to go, hey, man, what do I look out for in this part of, you know, I'm going to go to New York. What do I want to see? What don't I want to see? And so for, yeah. for the most part, I think the, uh, the input was valid because I was told to avoid parts of New York that if I'd have gone to them, things would have gone completely different than they had because I went to Manhattan. Yeah. Uh Could have gone to Hell's Kitchen or uh, (laughs) Brooklyn, (laughs) Queens. But no, I went right to Midtown. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, yeah. I've done that a few places as well. Yeah. You just kind of... Say, oh, thank you. I have experienced this, and I am so glad I am not going to have to experience that again because I've been there, and I know where not to go. And then there's some places where it's like, oh, seriously? I rather enjoyed myself there. I thought it was kind of cool. See? So, it's all it's all the person doing it, man. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Proving my point there. I like it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel accomplished now. <laughs> and, Yay! Uh, and for the listeners out there in Radio Land, if you are interested in um, Lee Scalman's uh, work, I did post a copy of the link in the notes to the show. So if you want to see that, because it's pretty good stuff. It's cool. I it's beyond my explanation. I'm not that good with tools and that kind of thing that he did was it was remarkable. And when I went to the place, he had these uh beds carved out of uh the stone. And when you lay down on the damn thing it was comfortable. Wow. And it was stone, yeah. It, and and there was a building he lived in while he was building the you know, the whole place. And Mm -hmm. inside it, he had designed this uh, fruit basket holder. So with a a string down the center of it with something on it so that the insects couldn't climb on that string to get to the food. He was just that inventive with what was ever around him. And it seemed like his his abilities were endless. Whatever he made worked. There were even uh, conductors, Capacitors, uh, what the hell? I got the. I probably have the names wrong. I wish Rob Wilkes was around; he would know. But uh, place was fantastic, and but here we are, and this is what we're always told: oh, how primitive, and this it is, and that it is. Well, maybe they were primitive and all this and and all that, but they still did it. And I think the deflection from the accomplishment is what they're trying to accomplish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. Get us distracted yeah, on something else. On their back and yeah. letting us know, see how much better we are than those poor primitive people back then. It's like, and I know you're going to hate me, <coughs> not hate me, but hmm. not going to like me bringing up this name. But I'd had this discussion with Hansel. Hansel? No, I don't. Hansel? I don't About mind. I don't mind so you ago. having. It discussion with well, Hansel. Well, I had one Hansel. with him about a year or so ago, and he was talking about how primitives and all that other fun stuff and how, you know, we're so much better than, like, aboriginals. And I said, seriously, dude, you get thrown out where they live with the same tools that they have, and let's see how long you live. Intelligence has got nothing to do with book smarts. It's got everything to do with your adaptability to your environment. That's what intelligence is. True. Yeah. Cause, hey, take Moose, for example, right? Lives in the damn uh, Wisconsin. Frozen well, Okay, <laughs> Wisconsin. I was going to just say Wisconsin. And, uh, yeah. But when she got stuck with an extra, extra crispy winter, going through it, she did a little sniveling. But when it was over, then it was, well, I got through it. It wasn't all that bad because that's how we are. But you got to uh-huh. remember, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even attempt to live in where she's living because those temperatures are too much. I know from just going through Colorado, I don't want to live there. No, 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 no. That's uh. But see, then you got places I've lived that would affect her that way. Yeah. Too hot or too uh, humid or too like certain deserts have affect different people different ways. Yeah. Well, there you go. But that to be able to do that is, who? <laughs> hmm. But then yeah. I think the same thing about being able to outsmart 120 degree deserts and still live in that, and people do. Yeah, that's so, what I thought was thinking of because when my mother was in Arizona for I think it was like 15. Yeah. Well, I only use moose because something like that, but it's. You know, it's one of those things. We went down to visit her a couple of times, and oh, my Lord. Yeah. I don't know how she survived. Yeah. I hated yeah. it. Exactly. Exa- it's, a, it's a personal thing. Everybody's got what they're capable of doing. And some yeah. people, are. it's different for all. I don't know. My strength is one thing that for you, you wouldn't even consider doing it, for example. Yeah. Right? Like, I would consider one of my strengths in life is uh, my acceptance that cannabis is not the devil's lettuce and going to ruin my life. I think that smoking cannabis 
actually enhances what life I've got. And yet there are some people that take it to an extreme. And that I do have to agree. You can take any you can take salt to an extreme. What does that mean? Oh take hell yeah. You know, and and to me it's not necessarily the substance that you're taking to the extreme. Mm. It's it's something inside you that is causing you to have that addictive personality. Yeah, well, what what does smoking dope or drinking alcohol or too much salt have to do with how you behave? See, they're linked somehow, but we're not well, we're not taught to appreciate that side of what you put in your body, you express physically, mentally, verbally. Somehow it comes out of you somehow. I look at it's life an ex- like this, yeah. right? It's Wave an external link. sim. Yeah. Okay, but there are things that we're not taught to identify with our eyes. So as a collective, we don't even recognize that they're there in the first place. Somebody else that's been educated in that in that realm, the you know vibrations and frequencies realm where it's secret knowledge, they, the system's been trying to keep this from everybody. They don't want us to know the truth. They want us to go to the doctor, get a chemotherapy yeah. fucking thing, get a bill for that, lose your yeah, house to treat, the bank. They so treat that. symptoms. They don't treat the the cause. Yeah, never. And it's in their law. It's it's. Everything that we do as a collective is it benefits hardly anybody, <laughs> but it's the, the accepted norm is so devastating, and we're just like fish. We just tolerate it. Nobody has the the wherewithal to collect and do anything to change. Nothing. We can barely get a group of forty people just around to complain about what the fuck's going on. <laughs> And then even there's people that that support the fucking state behind that. You go, wow, it's how how is this possible that anybody um, with with a, a a functioning brain could look at a society and come out with the society is right about what? Name one thing society is right about anything. I, I'd like to hear it. See, now, Grimmy just said that you can dry, die from drinking too much water, which, yes, yep, you can. You sure can. You can overdose on anything, too much anything, too much concrete in the forehead. That could leave you in a coma or dead. <laughs> yeah. See, and that's that's where everything needs to be in balance. You know, because either too much of something or not enough of something. It's a, It's the wonderful analogy in the Goldilocks and the Three Bears that a lot of people just flat ass don't catch that deeper meaning that too much of anything or not enough of anything is not good. But when you get right in that Goldilocks zone where you found that balance. Well, I really like the way that the government and whatever institutions, the learning institutions, have thrown the balance of society off fucking kilter. It's completely fucking failed now. See, they once upon a time, they only had the the divide and conquer was male and female. Now, they've got a group for every fucking weirdo that exists. Yeah. If you stand alone as an individual weirdo, there's a group out there for you to claim so that you can disrupt the fucking society. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 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 you want to join my call I'll prove it you, get, you, you have to get a mohawk <laughs> make some kind of rules blah 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 uh, uh, I'm being, and, I'm being and ridiculous I'm, but, and I'm yeah. unruly <laughs> yeah but see you're not you're not so unruly that you don't know when to use the game for your own benefit. And that people look down on that comment like it's something wrong with it. When every politician sit and fucking see the decision, his main goal is for him to come out of it with more than you. And half of these idiots can't possibly understand that fractional result reserve banking, what it means. I don't think they even concern themselves with it. It, it's a system based on scarcity. Well, eventually, right, but something even this big, something eventually it'll it's going to pop again. 
It always you get these bubbles, and then the bankers have to figure out a way to make another trillion dollars or eight hundred trillion, whatever it is. And they got to come up with a good story to sell the public so that they can do it. And that's basically a system based on scarcity, and only people on the external can fix that problem because they have convinced people that, oh, you can't fix your own problems. You must trust <laughs> someone else to do it for you. And that's that's the deeper issue that people need to get to, I think, is that, dang it, once you realize it's inside your head, you are the one that can fix your problems. Do you really want to? And that's that's where because there are so many people that I would I wanna I wanna but you don't wanna do it bad enough to actually do it. You know you can come up with all these wonderful schemes and plans and ideas and I've got a drawing board and I've got it all laid out and that's as far as it went. Well, how how does whatever is reality become reality then? Because I get argued with about the, all this all the time. Vinny and had a fit with me about it. I believe each of us individually lives our own version of reality, whatever that is. And yeah, we do. Depending on what chemical additives you also add into your food intake, say that you're taking a blood pressure medicine like I did, that was doing damage to your liver or it wasn't my kidney, or liver, or kidney, something like that. And anyway, I found out on a fluke that the, because I didn't pay attention to the details. I was trusting my uh, people that I trusted. Mm -hmm. And not because I trusted, I didn't take the time to look at what the fuck I was trusting. And when I did, I went, holy shit. It's bad how, how ignorant we truly all are. And ignorance is not taking the time to look at what the fuck you're doing. Simple. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there's times in life where I, like Marion Circle, didn't look like I was taking a look at what I was doing. But I felt comfortable doing it, so I went, eh, I'll do it. But the blood pressure medicine was the exact opposite reaction. I went, ah, uh, uh, you know, this does, eh. Uh. I was like a, like a child about this pill shit. Uh-huh. So when I gave it up, I felt um, accomplished, I think. I, I, I feel it's bragging rights to uh, take on the status and go against the grain and do what they tell you not to do and then beat them at their own fucking game and survive it. See, and that's, that's the difference between everybody's realities because you can have shared thoughts, shared concepts, um, you can even have a shared belief system, but until you actually act on it, it's the the act of doing that that differentiates everyone's reality from the others. Or the power of the mind in the first place, because even though me and Cirque are a, a team, a couple, you know, we're still two individual freaking people. There's definitely mm -hmm. two of us in this house. But there are times where you can't tell which one of us is which. <laughs> yeah. And then there's because others. You, yeah. Yeah. You act in concert with each other. And every once in a blue moon, we'll just be in complete contra contrast, night and day. You know, and other, but most of the time, not. And that's a very rare thing for me to experience with anyone, to not always be in friction with them about something. Like I love to argue with Vinny. I'm addicted to it. You know? Well. Because he makes it so easy to do. Yeah. See, and I, I'm <coughs> to the point now where I just really, hmm. I don't like to argue anymore. Because when you argue with someone, somebody's always got to win. You know, you've always got one winner and one loser. Or that's, that's the con conception of it all. And. I would much rather discuss with somebody that way. Okay, even at the end, when if we were to both go, okay, I see where you're coming from, but I'm sticking with my idea. And they say, I see where you're coming from, but I'm sticking with my idea. You still walk away, head held high. You've had a discussion. You've both inter interchanged ideas. You've both maybe taken something in, maybe not taken anything in. And yet you both 
Hmm. You have to hold your head high, whereas in an argument, there's always a browbeating going on. And I just, I just can't. I walk away from that shit anymore. It's like, you know what? If you want to argue, nah, I'm just, I'm just not into that anymore. So, and I used to, I used to love to argue. But well, yeah, taste not, change. So, yeah, there's no see. That's what I mean about these damn these rules that we we've got ourselves conned into believing somehow that we live under these imaginary rules and in the physical world maybe they can exist if you have enforcement and all these props but in a uh, in a mental state that they're just ideas that nah they're nonsense they're bad for you yeah well we waste a lot of fucking time alive being human going in the wrong damn direction and and not learning what the fuck to do to make life better because it is possible you can't improve your life your own life you can't improve anybody else's life that's a bunch of horseshit because if well if, actually you can because if you improve your own if life i don't let you, you make it to where you're no longer a captain assholio see, then someone uh, else's by uh, extension uh, becomes better because they don't have to deal with a captain assholio anymore but there's no force in mental mary it's all you've got to no. you've got to participate in a mental thing willingly so yes. uh, uh, so most of life is just a bunch of banter in the fucking yeah. long run, even when you're nose to nose with people talking about shit. Because Vinny says the other day, he says, haven't you ever said you want to kill somebody? No, uh, because I'd be one of those people, if I thought of doing it, I, I'd be worried about myself trying to figure out how I could get away with it. And no, uh, I'd rather put my mind and my attention on positive shit instead of all that negative crap. So because of that, that mental decision crap that I think I make, life brought me to a place that lives up to my mental expectation of live and let live. Mm-hmm. Period. That's the which simplest. makes you a true liberal in the true oh, definition yeah. of the Communist, word liberal. That yeah. makes you a liberal. Well, one day I was going to the store for certain or something early in the morning for some reason. I guess we were out of milk. I wanted my coffee and milk. And I ran into this guy, and he had a big old gigantic backpack. And he, he says to me in English, after he realized I would, he didn't speak Danish, uh, where's the church? And then we started to chitter-chatter. He knows, oh, you're American, and an hour goes by. And mm -hmm. he's pulling out orange, this uh, apple juice carton out of his backpack and drinking. And he's got his rolling cigarettes. And Anyway, we had this real long talking, and then he, oh, my, I, I didn't realize we'd been talking so long. And I, me neither. And we parted ways. But mm -hmm. the encounter, uh, just it's a good memory. Somebody I ran into going to the grocery store. Yeah. And, and well, not everybody vibrates to where I get to get my attention just because of what they're, you know, what they look like. It doesn't always work. There's more, yeah. yeah, there's more to it. I don't know how to define it, but there's some people I'll make a comment to, and some people I just know inside to just leave. Whatever that is, leave it the fuck alone. Uh, like, I go into the bar a couple months back during the summertime, mm -hmm. and uh, the bartender that owns the bar, he's there, and there's two women, and he's entertaining them, and they're drinking in the middle of the afternoon, they're boozing it up and uh they go, hey, can we braid your hair? Because I'm talking to their friend, the bartender, in English. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, I don't think my wife would really get get a giggle out of me coming home with, you know, having spent my afternoon getting my hair braided in a bar. I said, it's not mm -hmm. a good idea for me. <laughs> Karsten laughed. <laughs> and then they spent the rest of the time trying to not engage me anymore. <laughs> Fucking hysterical. Ah, so it was very obvious. Well, it was to me, and it was to Karsten, but they didn't know I was married. They were just having fun in the bar, you know, and I was their age bracket, more or less. But for me to respond the way I did, I had to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Most people ah. are dishonest, Miss Mary. And they, they don't yes. 
they don't want to tell the truth at the time when the truth is the most fucking valuable to you. It will save you so much trouble. You have no idea how much trouble you won't have if you just tell the truth right now. See, there you go. Yeah. But then again, how many people have that kind of a thing happen to them and they know that it really happens? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, sometimes life just throws us these little curveballs, and some people enjoy them, and some people get smacked in the eye and go around bitching because they got a black eye. Oh, I got a black eye once at a baseball game. I got a tooth knocked loose at a softball oh, game, man. took a bad bounce, and right in the face. Wow! Like, no, I I was a spectator, and the guy tipped the he tipped the pitch, and it went right in my eye. And I was so lucky I wasn't wearing eyeglasses that day, or I might have been wearing the glass on the inside. So, but it hurt. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it does. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not like the Incredible Hulk. When I get angry, I don't, I don't go all radioactive and get big and tear shit. I, I don't do that. I'd like to do that, but that, that doesn't happen. It would be cool to do just once, just to, just to experience it, but. Man, I don't know that I'd want to deal with the repercussions of everybody that was around me at the time, because afterwards they would all look at me like, "Oh God, don't make her piss." You know, you don't. I don't want to make people scared of me, at least not like that. Now, if I smile and they get nervous, <laughs> and I'm good with that. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, turning green. You, I don't know. You don't do the violent story very well, do you? No. It, there's no. an there's an art to violence, I think. It's like creative writing. Uh, people that do these horrible, violent things, what they don't do is they don't sit around in internet chat rooms talking about it. You know why? Because they're busy out there in the horrible world doing violent, ugly things. There you go. Because these things do happen. Not all of the things that we get told happen, happen, but a lot of it does. And maybe not in the way, exactly the way they tell us it happens, but the end result is still the same. Yeah. You know, oddly enough, I, I'm one of those people that lacks the conspiracy theory uh, links. And a couple of years ago, I don't know, maybe a year ago, maybe two, maybe ten, I opened up this link about the Kennedy assassination. Mm -hmm. And it's going on and on, and it's it's giving you more information than was ever made available to the public before. It wasn't like they hid it. It was just they never mentioned it. Yeah. And did did you know that the very day that Kennedy was assassinated, there was a, a cop, a Dallas cop, that looked like him that was assassinated too. And he was yeah. he was assassinated in the same way, so that you really couldn't tell it wasn't him. Yep. But the body style and and the similarity to Kennedy was amazing, even after having his head blown up. Because they had pictures yeah. now. Well, of course, now they can you can expose anything to anybody. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Who is going to do anything to anybody about nothing? It's all a bunch of crap. We're just being story told and uh, shootings in some faraway land, some bombing in here. They're doing the stuff. But yeah. you don't have to see it. You have to be told about it. That's the catalyst, is the not having the information. And if you're. How it is delivered to you. And how you react to that information, how it affects your person, your being. And some of us, it doesn't affect us at all in any way. We just deal in it. Like me, I don't feel like care. <laughs> it's just something to talk about, but what the fuck are you going to do about any of this? The only things I can do anything about is Cirque and Hannah and the cat. And anybody I encounter physically in my day. And so I just try to be decent to people and you know, not, not make a, a big mess out of their day. Because... You can be in a bad mood in the real world and upset them because you're upset when they didn't do nothing to you. So, why? But 
it took me a lot of years to even consider that as a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was busy looking at other people and not so much at me. And then when I started to pay attention to what I was doing myself, it was easier to control the results of my actions because I was the one making them on purpose, not just reacting to shit to be something, you know, bad, 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 to to exist at the moment. Now my goals are a little bit longer. I got responsibilities in this here life now, Miss Mary, things that require my attention and such. Well, you know what? Everybody's got responsibilities. It's whether they accept them. That's that's where it really, because there's a lot of people that they don't accept those responsibilities. They go, oh, that's what the government is here for. Or so-and-so else can take responsibility for that. But, you know, people accepting responsibility for themselves, that's the big kicker. That's what we need to convince people that, you know, it really is, but it kind of hurts. Not easy. That people need to Did I mute? take. Yeah, you muted. Oh, uh-oh. see, I thought I was coughing into the mute. I mute. Uh, I did it. No, I did. Did it right. Okay. Sorry. That's dude. okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. People are just people. All of us. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. It's not fucking yeah. complicated. We make big problems out of. Uh, Stupid ideas that really, in the long run, they're not worth the time we put into them, but this is the result of what we've been taught. And bad or good, it's what we know. So, if there's a better way, it'll show itself or it won't, I suppose. But at this time... I think it shows shows itself to everybody multiple times throughout their life. It's just, are they paying attention? Do all right. Do you personally misinterpret uh, something like something that displeases you there eh, with something that you completely detest? There, you know, I mean, there's different levels of something makes me uncomfortable, and yeah, and I assume a lot of it is that mirror image is, of what would I be saying if I was saying that to you, you know, because me and Vinny go back and forth about it. He's got this authority thing, and he thinks he's going to dictate the rules and the conditions that I'm going to respond to him with, and no, we're not an admiralty court, pal. I'm going to do exactly what I fucking want, and that's what Vinny... See, he actually does dictate the rules and how things, because that's what he does. He doesn't say it that way. (laughs) <laughs> and you abide by your own rules, and a lot of times that's ignoring him or baiting him. You know, and that's – people can dictate all they want. Mm. It doesn't necessarily – it has to take someone to actually follow what they're dictating. Haven't you ever for, followed for their, somebody, though? I have. When oh, I was yeah. When I was uh, making my way through my teen years – I ran into some adults when I was 13. Had my freaking attention big time. And I think that by the time I was 14, whatever I, there was not much left about the adult world to learn. It was just experience at that point on. Going and getting work and, you know, managing money and how do you, how do you rent an apartment? All these things that they didn't teach you in school. Yeah, because uh, there was no classes. In school. Yeah, there was no classes for that. But you know, but when I was uh, thirteen, fourteen, I had adults telling me, "Well, well, you're going to get a bank account, and when you do, you're going to get a checking account. And this is what you're going to do." And da, da 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 You have ID, and this shit gets you through the game easier. You go with the flow uh-huh. of the game, and it's back in the time when all they had was telephones and mail. Yeah. So you could always stay one step ahead of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was no way to find people back then. It was luck, if anything. 
So. Well, you were a trained professional, by golly. Well, no, I was actually just experiencing life on uh, life, but, the way life really was. Not, not that nine to five bullshit story they tell you at school. You know, go to work for corporate and be a bean counter or a lawyer. No, nah, they try. See, they you tried it on that's, you. That's a trained professional. That is someone who is a trained professional at living life as they see it. So you were a trained, prof- you mm-hmm. were a professional uh, at living your life because you obviously made your own way. Right. It was and, a profession of yours, you know, we, not necessarily that you had a career, but yeah, well, your profession was making your own way. Uh, hmm. Actually, no. See, I had this, uh, I have a life history of uh, getting in, into a person's problem and helping them fix what was wrong and because of the things that I managed to look like I did which was just bringing the right things together you know yeah then things worked and the person on the other end felt indebted forever and it was so like, you made a living out of being in control being of yeah but taking control of what seemed to be complete chaos and making it work. So, which yeah. means that was your profession. Well, yeah. In, in don't, a, don't, in look, a sense. don't look yeah. at profession as, as you know, like a lawyer or a doctor or something. Right, right, right. I right. think, no, I think a, that's been narrowed down entirely too much. Your <laughs> profession yeah. was basically, you know, you were a, a professional fixer. Well, that's probably one way to put it if you're going to analyze it to that level. Yeah. And not to say that that there weren't other problems that would you know come along, but the problems that were fixed were way more important. So they were. Uh, it's like when me and Sirk have a disagreement, we argue about something. It's always something stupid, so we never have to hold on to it. Yeah. It'll never be uh, something personal that it, nah. It's always some superficial crap, a mood problem, something stupid, so we can laugh about it later. But it relieves that fucking boiler because uh, she's under a lot of stress at her job. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she's good to me. It doesn't bring all that that disappointing shit that people can bring home from work. She she usually doesn't. So, but doesn't mean that the pressure from it isn't there. Yeah. So uh, she's just found a rather constructive outlet for it. Right, well, she even tried doing the radio, but Vinny kind of pushed her off it with his antagonizing her on the radio with the questions while she's live. Not having the respect for, yeah, it's just her first and second show, I, you know, I shouldn't do this, kind of pushy. He never saw that side of it. He only saw, he, I have the right to do this. You know? And it goes all back to that uh, Chloe thing. You know? Where does being rude and intrusive, cross that invisible barrier with each person that, that encounters it. You know, some people are way more forgiving than other people about what you say or how you present yourself or whatever the hell it is at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, and I don't, I don't think Cirque should quit doing the radio. No, no, I, she, but it's she intimidating. Come, on, it's intimidating to have somebody. Do that to you when you're live on the radio and you still got the jitters. Come on. It's well, yeah, it is. Oh, trust me, I know, darling. It's. it's I didn't forget. I mean, I'm tough now, and I'm you know I've this ain't my first rodeo and all that bullshit. But it took a lot for me to get here uh, mentally yeah. because hell, it's, well, it's easy to mistake this radio personality shit for a form of reality. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. Well, I'm human. I've got an ego just like Vinny does, and I've always got to remind myself, uh, at a damn near every minute of the fucking day level, that this is just a fucking life. It's not even real. It's just whatever you want it to be. Enjoy it. So that's what I did. There you go. But it doesn't translate worth a shit to most people because they themselves. If they're not doing whatever it is I'm doing in their own way, they're doing something different and they're struggling with it, then they're they're having friction and they're not comfortable. 
and we won't get along. And just because somebody's comfortable doesn't mean you can't make them uncomfortable for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Finding people's buttons. Exactly. And it's allowed by the person reacting to the button pusher. Just like, yeah. yeah. But, but there are button pushers out there that <clears throat> that is what they live for. You know, that that's yeah. that's like their confirmation for living yeah. is by pushing other people's buttons, getting a rise out of someone else. That's, that's how they build or boost their own ego. Yeah. And it's, it's actually sad. Well, very sad. You know, whatever it you know, is, that people have to, they have to do that kind of stuff to, mm. to get a negative emotional rise out of someone else so that they can feel better about themselves. That's a sad way of being. That's also an opinion. Well, it, yeah, but it's, the, uh, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm not saying you're not correct with my yeah. opinion. I'm just saying, I just want it to stand. You know, like Vinny would say, I just want to make a point of pointing out, not that it's good or bad or right or wrong or any of that horseshit. It's just that everything that I say to you is opinion. And yes. some of it is based on uh, collective knowledge that we share and agree yeah. on. Because there's a lot of shit we've been taught that we both go, oh, boy, we got fucked there, didn't we? <laughs> uh-huh. It, well... It, it comes with experience, and not everybody's going to walk the same damn path we walked. But we had the luxury of walking down a good piece of it together through a lot of change and shit. So it, it gives you a, a better understanding of the other person if you were yes. there when it happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we don't all do that. A lot of people are very standoffish. They don't get involved in, in other people's uh, e-world. There's different levels of being in the e-world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because me and Vinny can disagree about who owns the color blue and everything like that. But when when he needed a hand, I offered help because I had help to offer. But he didn't ask me personally. You know, it wasn't like, oh, you're the only one in the world that can help. He brought something up and I, "Ah, I can help you out with that if you need it. It was just obvious that you know, it was needed, but it wasn't directly needed by me. I'm the only one that can help in the bullshit story. You know, yeah. like we're fed about the superheroes and shit like that. Yeah. The only, only guy. Superman can save the day. Yeah. yeah. What? Nah, you know, Supergirl would do the same fucking thing. So. Ah. Well, you know what? I'm what? a... I have a I'm a superhero and yeah, I I yeah. have superpowers yeah. and sometimes you know cuz they say to err is human and there are some days where I am exceptional at it so I become superhuman <laughs> and <laughs> you know what I am I'm a sexist and I I like the I like the man woman world that I live in and and I'm not complaining about that other freaky fucked up world out there cuz it's fun to watch them they entertain this shit out of me I would never do any of the crap these weirdos are doing. But if they're going to make a fucking movie about it and put it on TV, I guess I'll watch it. But, you know, to never, See, never will I ever lose the reality of it's my reality, not yours, to dictate to me what it is. It's mine to define. There and, you go. And I've tried to share that idea with other people and I always come out of it sounding pompous. And it, I think we're all the freaking same. I don't think there is a, you're a better this than that. It's interpretation. You gauge things yourself. Nobody well, tells it's what you how we to. we allow into our reality that makes our reality ours. Nobody tells you how to interpret the taste of chocolate. Yeah. Right? You do that all by yourself. And you probably can't, I can't find words to describe the uh, when I have a really good piece of chocolate or maybe a hot bowl of soup on a cold day, something yeah. like that. That that definitive, you know. And some people are really sensitive, man, and they get their rocks off enjoying that freaking thing. Go figure. And that's okay. Different. Oh, the far the farmer's like that. When he comes home, when it's cold, when mm. it's been cold and out. 
working in the whatever he is doing that day. Oh, hey. And I've got a big batch of soup going. Oh, man. We're, he's he's we're, like, I... We're out of time, little <laughs> missy. And, uh, he's funny. But we're out of time. Yes, we are. And I kept notes through the show. I hope you'll appreciate that. And, uh, cool, Bean. Appreciate you coming along. I don't really care to... I just enjoy the, the doing the radio with like you or Vinny. It's so much fun to talk to somebody else and not do this, doing the thing alone. It, uh, it is a lot more fun than uh, flying solo. Yeah. Flying solo is fun from yeah. time to time. But or when you have a point to make about a particular thing. But yeah. I, I don't find that coming on very often anymore. The older I get, I seem to feel like, eh, they don't give a fuck anyway, so I'll just keep it. <laughs> yeah. If they want to know, they'll ask me. There you go. There and you with go. that, thank you so much for In a Perfect World Tonight, and Grim, for giving me the hand with the computer to make the whole thing all possible. So, And if you're out there and you've got an extra few bucks and you don't know what to do with it, Grimner has uh, got RLM to run, and you can always use a little help with it. So feel free. RealLibertyMedia.com. Feel free. There's a button on the uh, link to the show. And with there that, you go. got anything to say? Uh, no, other than I will not be around to play dork table with you for the next two Saturdays because I got family things going on. So, well, you know, it's thank like, you for letting me play today. Yeah. Oh, anytime. But like Captain Spalding said, you know, hey, this clown business supersedes any family business. <laughs> 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 but I, I'm not going to enforce that rule with you. <laughs> I'm going to back the hell off and. Thing. Have fun with your family, Miss Mary. <laughs> I will do that. Thank, Thank you, Flasher, and thanks everybody, everybody for listening, for listening and... too. Yeah, what a what a kid. Yeah. Later. See you. Love you. Bye. <laughs>